What's up my pre-calc people? I'm Michael Princhek. In this video, we're gonna to tackle topics 1.9 and 1.10 out of AP Pre-Calculus. These two topics deal with rational functions, primarily looking at identifying vertical asymptotes and holes. Now this is only part one of the video, and in this part, we're gonna talk about how to do exactly that, identify either vertical asymptotes or holes that exist in a rational function. But in the second part, we're gonna really dive deep into what happens as you get really, really, really close to a vertical asymptote, or what happens as you get really, really, really close to a hole through using limit notation. So stay tuned for that video as well. All right, let's dive right into it. Now to really understand vertical asymptotes and holes, we first have to understand the domain of a rational function. The domain of a rational function includes all real numbers, excluding those that make the denominator into zero. If you're a value that makes the denominator zero, you need to be excluded from the domain. Now, when an x value is excluded from the domain of a rational function, what that means is at that particular x value, nothing happens, absolutely nothing. Now, we could use the word nothing, but in math, the word nothing basically means a discontinuity. So we say that at these particular values, the function is discontinuous. In simple terms, that means nothing is happening at those values. Now there are two forms of nothingness or two forms of discontinuities when it comes to rational functions. That is a vertical asymptote or a hole. Let's talk about a vertical asymptote first and then we'll talk about a hole. But let me forewarn you, the actual definitions of these two things get kind of wordy and a little bit confusing. Once we start looking at some solid examples, trust me, it'll make far more sense. If the value a is a real zero of the polynomial function in the denominator of a rational function and is not also a real zero of the polynomial function in the numerator, then the graph of the rational function has a vertical asymptote at x equals a. So I guess that's pretty simple to understand. If you are a value that makes the denominator only a zero and not also the numerator, then that's gonna produce a vertical asymptote at x equals a. But furthermore, a vertical asymptote also occurs at x equals a if the multiplicity of a as a real zero in the denominator is greater than its multiplicity as a real zero in the numerator. So basically they're saying if you have a common factor that is in both the numerator and the denominator, which means you have a value that makes both the numerator and the denominator zero, if the multiplicity of that value in the denominator is greater than the multiplicity of that value in the numerator, that's also gonna produce a vertical asymptote. Now let's talk about a whole. If the multiplicities of a real zero in the numerator is greater than or equal to its multiplicities in the denominator, then the graph of the rational function has a hole at the corresponding input value. Okay, like I said, I promise, those definitions are very confusing, but it's kind of simple. We think about three different paths. If you have an x value that makes only the denominator zero, does not make the numerator zero at all, then you have a vertical asymptote at that x value. However, if you have common or shared factors between your numerator and your denominator, then you gotta look at the multiplicities. If the multiplicity of that zero is greater in the denominator, then that two will make a vertical asymptote at that value. But if the multiplicities are equal or greater in the numerator, that's gonna produce a hole at that particular x value. Let's take a look at a couple generic examples that show exactly those three things. All right, in this first example here, we have x plus c over x minus a. So again, we're not using numbers just to keep it generic. But we notice that a only makes the denominator zero. Therefore, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals a, and negative c, well, that's just gonna be a zero in the numerator, which is totally fine. In this next example, we have an x minus a times x plus c in the numerator, and then we have an x minus a squared in the denominator. So once again, now we have a shared factor, x minus a, therefore a makes both the numerator and the denominator zero. But the multiplicity of a is greater in the denominator. In the denominator, the x minus a has a multiplicity of two, and the numerator has a multiplicity of one. So because the denominator has the larger multiplicity of that zero, then we also have a vertical asymptote at x equals a. And in this next example here, we see we have x minus a times x plus c over x minus a. Now in this case, we also have an x minus a, both in the numerator and the denominator, but their multiplicities are equal. Both in the numerator and the denominator, they have a multiplicity of one. That's gonna produce a whole at a. And in this final example here, we have x minus a to the fourth on top, x plus c, and then x minus a to the 
third on the bottom. And in this example, once again, we also have that shared zero of A in both the numerator and the denominator, but the multiplicity of that shared zero is greater in the numerator, producing a whole at X equals A. So a little bit confusing, a couple things you're definitely gonna have to study, but again, just focus on if you only make the denominator zero, that's gonna be a vertical asymptote. If it's shared, if you have a shared factor, a shared zero between both the numerator and the denominator, you gotta really think about the multiplicities. If it's greater in the denominator, vertical asymptote, equal or greater in the numerator, that's gonna produce a whole. All right, now let's take a look at some more specific examples that actually involve real rational functions. Now in this example, we see two forms. On top, we see standard form, which is awesome when it comes to determining any behavior rational function, but for everything else, you want it to be in factored form. So the most important thing I do first is factor it. That way I could see what values make the numerator and what values make the denominator zero. Now the first thing I want to identify is the fact that negative five needs to be excluded from the domain because it makes the denominator zero. So that means negative five is one of those versions of nothingness and that nothingness could be either a whole or a vertical asymptote and that is my job, well your job, to figure out. Now because negative five only makes the denominator zero, that's going to create a vertical asymptote at x equals negative five. In this next example here, once again, we see standard form and then factored form, and we see that we have x minus two in both the numerator and the denominator, meaning that an x value of two must be excluded from the domain because it makes the denominator zero. But here we see the multiplicities are the same. They're both multiplicity of one in the numerator and the denominator. That's gonna create a whole at x equals two. There will be no vertical asymptote in this problem. Now the next thing we have to tackle is where exactly is that hole? Because a vertical asymptote makes sense. It's a vertical line that you're never gonna cross, but a hole is one teeny, teeny, tiny point that is removed, it's gone, it's not there. So we know the X value of that hole is two, but what the heck is the Y variable of that hole? Even though there's nothing there, we still wanna make sure we know where that nothingness exists. Now this is actually really easy to do. The first thing you're gonna do is block out the common factors the two factors that were the same between the numerator and the denominator. Just kind of block them out. You just use your mind or use your hand or literally cross them out. Then take that x value where we know the whole exists at two and plug it into what's left over, which is gonna be the x minus four. So two minus four is negative two. That's the y value of our whole. That means our whole is located at two comma negative two. Now nothing is there. It's actually not a point. It's gonna be an open circle, which is exactly why we're calling it a whole. But we need to know where it exists. That way we can understand exactly where it's at. Now in this next example, once again, we see standard form and factored form, and we see two values where there's going to be nothing, three and negative four. And once again, we gotta figure out which is which. Well, because negative four makes only the denominator zero, we don't see a shared factor in the numerator as well, that means we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative four. And then once again, we see that that x minus three is a shared factor between both the numerator and the denominator, that's gonna produce a whole at x equals three. So once again, we could ask the question, okay, we know the vertical asymptote is at x equals negative four, but where exactly is that hole located? We know that it's located in x value of three, but what's the y value of where that nothingness occurs? So once again, use the cover up method. Cover up the two factors that created the hole and then plug three into what was left over. So in the numerator, we're gonna do three plus three, and the denominator, we're gonna do three plus four. That gives us six sevenths. So the hole, where nothing exists, is located at three comma six sevens. In this next example, once again, standard form, factored form makes it way easier to see all these things. We first see that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two because it makes only the denominator zero. And then we see that we have a hole at five because once again, we have that shared factor, x minus five between the numerator and the denominator where they have the same equal multiplicity of one. And then of course, we're gonna ask you where exactly is that location of that hole? So we're gonna cross out that shared common factor that was the x minus five, and we're gonna plug in five to what's left over. So we have two times five minus three, that's gonna be seven, and then we have five plus two in the bottom, that's gonna also be seven. Seven divided by seven is one. So the location of that missing hole where nothing exists is five comma one. Now in this next example here, once again, we have factored form, which is awesome. And what we'll notice is that we have that shared factor of x plus four in both the numerator and the denominator. 
So being in the denominator, obviously that means at negative four, we have an excluded value. Nothing is gonna exist there. But notice the multiplicity is greater in the denominator. We have a multiplicity of two in the denominator and a multiplicity of one in the numerator for that factor of x plus four. That means we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative four, and there is no hole for this particular problem. Now in this problem, we reverse it. Now the x plus four squared is in the numerator. So it's a very similar looking function, yet very, very different. So now we, again, negative four is clearly a value that makes the denominator zero, so it needs to be excluded from the domain. But because the multiplicity is greater in the numerator than it is in the denominator, that's gonna create a hole at negative four. And of course, we're gonna ask ourselves the question, where exactly is that hole located? Now for problems like this, it could be a little bit tricky. Once again, we're gonna cover up the factors that made that hole. But be careful, there was only one x minus four in the bottom, or excuse me, x plus four in the bottom, and up top there was an x plus four squared. So when we reduce that, only one of the x plus fours in the numerator is going to cancel out with that x plus four in the denominator. So what's left over, if we kind of cover it up, is actually an x plus four and an x minus six. I know that I'm covering up the x plus four squared, but only one of them is actually gone. So once again, what's left is x plus four times x minus six. Take the negative four and plug that in, and we get negative four plus four, which is zero. Negative four minus six, which is negative 10. Zero times negative 10 is zero. So at negative four comma zero is where our hole is gonna be. That's a little bit tricky for some kids because they hear me talk about covering it up, so they cover all of it up. But you gotta understand that that x plus four factor in the numerator is gonna be left behind when I kind of cover it up. There's gonna be one left behind. So be very careful. There's going to be a hole at negative four comma zero. It's not a zero, right? Because there's nothing there. I'm not saying that this is a point. It's a hole where nothing exists. And in this final example, we see a lot going on. So let's first address the values that must be excluded from the domain because they make the denominator zero. So that's gonna be two, six, and one. All three of them make the denominator zero, so they are points of, well, nothingness. So we have to identify if it's a vertical asymptote or a hole. First, at one, we have a vertical asymptote because it only makes the denominator zero. There's not even a shared factor of x minus one in the numerator. Then we have x equals six. That's also gonna be a vertical asymptote because the multiplicity of the x minus six factor is greater in the denominator than it is the numerator, producing a vertical asymptote at x equals six. And finally, we're gonna have a hole at x equals two because the multiplicity of that factor is greater in the numerator than it is the denominator. All right, now for that final question of where exactly is that hole located at? Where do we put that point of nothingness? We know the x value is two, but what's the y value? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna reduce the factors that created that hole. So the x minus two in the numerator, excuse me, the denominator is going to cancel with one of the x minus twos in the numerator, leaving the x minus two still left over in that numerator. Now when it comes to the x minus sixes, we have three on top and five on the bottom. So three of the factors on top will cancel with three of the factors on the bottom, leaving the x minus six squared in the denominator. And then we also have the x minus one and the x plus two. x plus two in the numerator, x minus one in the denominator. So we take that value of two, where we know that hole is located, and we plug it into all that value, all those different factors that are left over. And well, we get zero, because one of those factors is still at x minus two, and we plug in two, two minus two, zero. So all the other factors don't even matter at that point. We're going to get a zero. Now, that doesn't mean there is a zero at two comma zero. There is a hole at two comma zero. It just happens to be on the x-axis, but because it's a hole, a place where nothing exists, it is definitely not a zero. The only zero in this problem is at negative two because negative two turns the numerator into zero and has nothing to do with the denominator. It's not a point of nothingness. It is in the domain, so that's why there's a zero at negative two. That's an actual zero, but there's a hole at positive two. So that's it for how to identify vertical asymptotes and holes when looking at rational functions. It can be a little bit confusing, but once you get those main big ideas down about looking at does it make only denominator zero or what about the multiplicities if it is a shared factor between both the numerator and the denominator. All right, hopefully it made a lot of sense. Hopefully I went through enough examples that you could then take this information and use it on homeworks, quizzes, and tests to make sure that you're going to ace any question that deals with identifying vertical asymptotes or holes.